Oh, please. Hebrews 13, 17, prophets on the scene, wash your souls clean before we go into the gasoline. Took a while to understand, Psalms 1 and 11, 10. Brother calling me from Mississippi, trying to build a man. I flushed 14 grams, it made angels rejoice. It made me and Satan divorce, no spot of support. I'm running the course with my hand to the plow. Now, putting in the pebble the way Soldier James taught me how. Break it out! It strengthened my spirit when we in the building. Ain't no feeling like giving the precept for a precept given. Preach in more conditions. Teach self a second living. We second Timothy 215 representative. Sheesh. Will the common interest. Shalom, shalom, most high Christ bless. I'm Officer Asa. Officer Ariel. And we back with another episode. We back, we back. Watchmen Radio. We it's back in this building. So we still talking about. These false religions that mm -hmm. our people follow. So we're going to get right into it. We don't waste no time. Here is. Who we got here? Another one of their kings. Oh, this man. is your king. For those of you in Christianity, I need a diehard Christian to explain what we are looking at. Roll the tape. And his wife is hosting a dating show called The One. Here's the video clip. Bringing our mesh making expertise to the TV screen. Get naked on the first day. Find that special someone. Mm. Do you want to come to the mansion? Yeah. We set the environment to let them know, do you, do you, and be you. And we're not here to judge, and we, we're, we're just here to have your back if you need us. We're going to introduce Ashley and Brett to the best singles Atlanta has to offer. And they're going to be living together in this estate, y'all. But the goddess Tammy and myself, they just might find the one. I hope. Okay, hey, okay. I, you got some? Go ahead. No, go ahead. I, I'm a, man. This is, bruh. You can't make this up. This is a God fearing man and supposed to be a God fearing woman. So, holy rollers. So is he a dater, a dating show host, or is he a preacher? Which one is it? I don't know. I'm confused. <laughs> we need the Christians to explain. But while y'all gathering y'all thoughts. Let's see what the Bible says about what we just looked at. Give me Hosea 5 and 4. Two scriptures. First and foremost, a dating show is whoredom. Right. Second thing he said, we just want everybody to understand, you know, be you. Do what do you want to do. Right. Do what you want to do. We ain't judging. What are we going to see what the Bible says about what we've seen and what does the Bible say about judging? First, let's get Hosea 5 and 4. Right. The book of Hosea, chapter 5 and verse 4. Read. They will not frame their doings to, to turn unto their God. Okay. But the spirit of whoredoms is in the midst of them. Read. And they have not known the Lord. Read it again from the top. They will not frame their doings to turn unto their God. Our people, especially our people in the Christian church, you will not frame your mind or your heart. The Bible will say your heart. That's going into your mind. You will not turn your mind to God. You will turn your mind to your lust, your desires, what you feel, what you want to do. Read. For the spirit of whoredoms is in the midst of them. What right. do we just see on that show that a Christian man is sponsoring with his wife? Read that again. For the spirit of whoredoms. What kind of spirit? The spirit of whoredoms. That's all that's finna go on right there. They ain't no different from uh, uh, Bad Real Girl Fortune. Club. I'm mean, not Real Fortune. I was about to say uh, Love Connection. Love Connection. So he the next Chuck Willer right. right now, right? Flavor of Love. Oh, wow. All them shows, it was nothing but whoredom. So you're going to put a bunch of single people in a, a big house on a estate, a big house with land. And, and say it's a dating show for them to find a one. They're going to fornicate. They're going to have sex with each other all on that show. Nothing but whoredom. Right, because you saw a whole, the, whole, the, the scene with the, the whole bunch of women doing a, putting them a body paint on the, on the brother. They doing body paint. What this is, is sponsored by Christianity. So, so if he's supposed to be a pastor, I should be able to find this in the Bible, right? Where, where's matchmaking in the Bible? We supposed to, according to him. 
That's right. not in the Bible. Let's get Proverbs 31 and 9. Because right. your king said, this is your king. Your king said, my church folk, he said, we're not going to judge. Do you. Be you. Let's see what the Bible says. Does the Bible say right. don't judge nobody? Let's see what the Bible says. Proverbs 31 and 9. The book of Proverbs, chapter 31 and verse 9. Read. Open thy mouth. Judge righteously. Uh-huh. And plead the cause of the poor and needy. Read it again from the top. Open thy mouth. So speak. And then what are you doing when you speak? Read. Judge righteously. Do what? Judge righteously. God said to judge. Judge how? Righteously. Right. Judge righteously. Meaning according to the Bible. So the Bible says you can judge. Right. Read on. And plead the cause of the poor and needy. These pastors, these religious leaders that set up in our community, they don't plead the cause of the poor and the needy. Uh, I'm a plug. The church sit down. Right. As we sat down with a church, they they not really about pleading the cause of the poor and the needy. You know what? They didn't want to hear the Bible. They supposed to be about exactly. the Bible when we was trying to bring the Bible to them. Exactly. It's like the dude mocked us like we ain't we ain't out here flipping these pages. I know y'all flipping pages. We ain't we ain't coming for all that. Bruh. So called men of God didn't want to flip through these pages. Right. I'm confused, but I see what they want to flip through. They, they want legs flipping in the air. That's Facts. what they want. This is what they about right here. A, a dating show. Exactly. Ain't nothing but holes in that house. Give me Deuteronomy right. 23, 17. I know we got more. I want to get one more scripture. If you got some officer, go ahead and bring okay. it out. Let me get Deuteronomy 23 and 17. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 23 and verse 17. If you a man of God... You're not going to sponsor some wicked like this. No. Nah. Read. There should be no whore of the daughters of Israel. Read that again. There should be no whore of the daughters of Israel. There shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel. You blacks, Hispanic, and Native American women are the daughters of Israel. You're not supposed to be a whore. This show called The One is going to make you a whore. Is going to promote whoredom. And a lot of our people will think that that behavior is okay because right. he's supposed to be a man of God, a gospel singer, a famous one at that. Right. So you got you some? From, you, Go ahead. You went from being a gospel singer to being a matchmaker host. This is crazy, man. Ridiculous. Hey, let's get that next piece of material. Let's see what we got here. Read that. So we had our first church goer pastor, religious leader. Let's continue on because we're dealing with Christianity. These are the false religions that our people follow, blindly follow. And by the way, you're not going to find Christianity in the Bible at all. Let's read that. Let's pull that up. Let's read that. U.S. pastor admits of stealing $1.3 million from church members says, God told me to do it. Oh, wow. oh, my Lord. Oh, my Lord. Read it one more time. <laughs> you can't make this up. They will sit up here in these hole-in-the-wall churches, in these mega churches, right. do some evil, and then tell their members. God told me to do it. God spoke to me. And they will, yes, pastor. Yes, yes, Lord. You are still sitting there. With your simple behind. Read. U.S. pastor admits of stealing $1.3 million from church members. He right. stole $1.3 million from his church members. That's not an accident. And then why he say he do it? Says, God told me to do it. He said, God told him to do that. Read the caption at the bottom. Yes, let's get to the nitty gritty, right? Let's get to a logical reason why... Anyone would say that God told me to steal 1.2 million from my church. 1.3 million from my one church. Point, one point three, get the math. Right. You got to get the math on 1. that. 1.3. He's thieving. His ass thieving. He is a thief. Go ahead. U.S.-based pastor has claimed God instructed him to steal more than 1 million you from- You got, wait. I'm sorry. You got to hear this. He's U.S. pastor claims God instructed him to steal. Bruh. Right. 
So rock 15 and 20. So rock 15 and 20. You can't make this up. But our people will still go to church the next day after an announcement like this. Mm -hmm. Do you know God knows his heart? Read that. The book of Sirach, chapter 15 and verse 20. He have commanded no man to do wickedly. What did the Bible say? He have commanded no man to do wickedly. That's why it's important to read the Bible, black folks, Hispanic folks, and not just listen to what a man tell you because the Bible does not say God will instruct you to do evil. It doesn't say that. You can't blame God for your wrongdoing. Right. Message. Finish that up. Neither have he given any man license to sin. God didn't give no man license to sin. It's not in the Bible. That's not how God moved. Let's go back, finish that up. U.S.-based pastor has claimed God instructed him to steal more than $1 million from his Christian community in a cryptocurrency scheme. According to a press release issued by the state's division of securities, the Colorado pastor of, of, and his wife, Allegedly raised around 3.2. Hold on, hold on. You notice, just like we saw in the, the show, The One by Kirk Franklin and his wife, and then we see another Christian pastor, the wife be on one accord right. with the husband, with the evil. Just like when y'all, if you read Acts 5 on your own time, when Ananias wanted to keep half of the money, guess what? Sapphira, his wife, was in cahoots with it. The wife always be in the know of the evil that the husband doing. They be on the same page. Just like with Aiken, right? When he stole the yep. Babylonian garment and, with the, and coat. the piece of gold and the shekel. Yep. That's why jo uh, Joshua was commanded to kill him and his family. The whole house. Because what? The wife, the right. kids, everybody was in the know of that. They was all privy to it. We could drop that. We could drop that. Hey, can we get uh, one another scripture? I want to get another yeah, scripture. Yeah, bring it right? out. Bring it out. Bring it because out. Because everyone, if you ask a Christian, do they believe in God? They'll say yes. Everyone will say yes. Right? All the time. Right. Let's get uh, Exodus chapter 20 and verse 15. Bring it out. Exodus 20 and 15. Because he said that God told him to steal 1.3 million, right? Let's see what's the law on stealing. You can't be. The man said God told him to steal. So if God told you to do to steal, then what's this right here? Read. The book of Exodus chapter 8, the book of Exodus chapter 20 and verse 15. Uh-huh. Thou shalt not steal. Well, wait a minute, but God told you to steal, but God says, Thou shalt not steal. Does that make sense? That makes no sense at all. See, what they do, they do, they want to do this evil and they want to justify God and everything. There you go. Because, you know, these pastors, ultimately, they, they prey on the people. There you go. So I got to have God backing me up on this to be justifiable. God told me to do it. But the problem is our people don't read the Bible. Henceforth, these pastors, they're not teaching our people the Bible at all. That's why we go to these church sit-downs and you have these pastors where we ain't had to flip pages and we just want to come to get to the solutions. They claim to want to get down to the solutions. They claim want to, to want to fix the the problems, but they don't want to go into the book to find out how to fix it. They don't want to go to God's word. At all. At all. You can't make this up. No. And because we don't read the Bible, you, you haven't heard this. Remember, they tell our people don't read the Old Testament. Right. So what you just pulled just now, they don't know that. Mm -hmm. He tell them only read the New Testament. And then they play games with the letters of Paul, and you don't know what's what. That's a law. That's in the Big Ten. But he say God told him to do that. We ain't done. We got more from the Christian church. So thus far, we have a matchmaker, and now we have a thief. Oh, in the, under the umbrella of Christianity, right? Yep. Wow. So far, a matchmaker. So it's got to be some good in Christianity, right? We go right. to it. We go find some good in Christianity. We go here? see. Let's see. Oh, <laughs> Let's see. There's got to be some good in Christianity, right? Let's, Let's see. Let's see. What we got here? We oh, wait a minute. I hope they can see his face. We got yours truly, Spitman. Oh, Spitman. Right. We got Spitman. <laughs> Let's see what Spitman has to show us today. The man who he, he spit in his hand. And this was supposed to be him demonstrating a miracle. It was supposed to be a revelation right. in that. He, he hopped up spit and rubbed it in another man's face. This you is your king. That's nasty. 
Press play. Another staff member just left, and all they said was it's because God called them somewhere else. <laughs> after, after six years, you can't even tell me the real reason. But you do subliminal Instagram posts. A, a screenshot with some of my brothers earlier today that I cannot repeat on this telecast. Hey, y'all, hey, pause it. Y'all brothers with them dreads, y'all better watch them hairstyles, man. I, I'm trying to tell you. Y'all up here, hey, because Spit Man, he looks strange. He look borderline over here. That, that's that Christian spirit. Looking real zesty right here. Like the, the, the soap, the company. Zest, everything that come, everything that come from it. Y'all better watch that, man. Dang. Oh, you know I'm trying to try something new. All right, <laughs> that, that come with a spirit. Like, what's up with that hairstyle? Oh, God told me to do it. Uh, there you go. Anything <laughs> they do, they gonna blame it on God. Press play. <laughs> but people basically uh, had written off every good thing that I'd ever done because of one thing that wasn't a sin. It was just gross. It was just disgusting. But I can think of a lot of other things y'all do with spit too. Oh Ooh, man, was the, the brother he left the, was the one he spit on. I don't know. <laughs> hey, it might have been he left. You did you did spit in the man's face, rubbed it all in his face, and he probably left. Hey, it might have right. been him. But see what? Okay, so what's going on right here? He's upset because one of his church members left and apparently did a subliminal post on social media. So he's mad because one of his right. members left. Why do they get mad when their members leave? Isaiah 56 and 11. Why do they get mad when their members leave? That's why nobody ever changes from the Christian church because right. it's about greed. It's about wealth. Mm -hmm. Souls are never changed. Lives are never changed from Christianity. It's all a show. It's all theatrics. Right. But this is why not only him, but all pastors get angry when people leave their church. Read right. that. Let me start at 10. Yep. The book of Isaiah, chapter 56 and verse 10. Why is he mad? Let's see. His watchmen are blind. They so his watchmen, a watchman is supposed to warn you. These pastors don't warn our people of oncoming danger, right. of the traps that set. To keep us incarcerated, keep us on drugs, keep us killing each other. They do not do that. Read. His watchmen are blind. They are all ignorant. They're all what? They are all ignorant. They don't know right. nothing. The things they should know to help the people, they're ignorant of them. Read. They are all dumb dogs. What are they? They are all dumb dogs. Read. They cannot bark. Uh huh. Sleeping, lying down. Loving to slumber. You buy a dog right. so the dog can be a second line of defense. They can bark. They can alert you of danger. Say you had a, a Rottweiler right. and you were asleep. That Rottweiler is going to start barking to let you know it's danger at the door. These pastors do not warn our people of anything. Read. Yay. They are greedy dogs. They are what? They are greedy dogs. They're all about money so when they lose a member they get mad because that's a head that ain't paying tithes and offering read which can never have enough which can never have enough right. our people so destroyed you will see a show like preachers of la and you will still go to church that's what they put in your tithes to they jets they bugattis they clothes right. they big house why you ride the bus why you take ubers why you take lyft they live in lavish. Read. And they are shepherds that cannot understand. Uh huh. They all look toward. They all look to their own way. Mm -hmm. Everyone for his gain. Uh huh. From his quarter. They all about self gain. Then he tried to justify him spitting in the man's face, just saying it was gross. Bro, you don't do nothing like that. Right. This is the lewdness that's in the church. Then you know what come behind that? He trying to justify what he did. Get Psalms 5 and 5. Because mm -hmm. I know we got more. I want to make sure we touch this other stuff we got. All these religions we touching on, our people have to leave these things. That's why you never get connected to God. Because God ain't in this stuff. Right. Psalms 5 and 5. The book of Psalms, chapter 5 and verse 5. Read. The foolish shall not stand in thy sight. 
They, thou hatest all workers of iniquity. So this, this scripture right here destroys God hate the sin, not the sinner. Like. No, 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 no. You can't stand in the sight of God in the midst of sin. God does not condone sin. He's not okay with sin. He don't just dislike the sin and not like you. No, it's one and the same. And that's why people leave in church now because they see flaws in Christianity. There you go. Because you, they see the flaws in Christianity and be like, wait a minute, though. That's not what the Bible say. Wait a minute. Now you, full of, you just contradicted yourself. Yep. And they start to see the flaws and they start to see that these pastors are hypocrites. That's it. That's is all it? they see. You still on that script? Because I wanted to get uh, the script. That's it on that? Yes, sir. Let's, ahead, get, um, let's get John chapter um, 11 and verse 47. Bring it because out. Because ultimately behind the scenes, these are what these pastors are saying behind the scenes, right? Because they, they are having meetings right now, right? They having meetings because people are leaving the Christian church because they starting to see the contradiction, contradictions and they starting to see the hypocrisy in Christianity, right? Bring it out. Because you have brothers like us in the purple, IUIC, we out here teaching, thus saith the Lord. We bringing out the Bible. We bringing out the medicine. We showing our people who they are according to the Bible because we connecting the Bible with history. And also we coming up with solutions and then our people know that they must change. But this, this is the, what the pastors fear because ultimately they, they don't want our people to change. They want to keep this crap going. They want to keep having the, they, Kurt Franklin want to be a day show host. You have past, this pastor, last pastor, stood at 1.3 million. It's all hypocrisy. Read that. Remember, they live lavish, though. Right. So they're not affected by the things that we go through as a people because they on top. But then you have people in the church like, wait, man, why you got the big house and I'm still struggling? Yep. Oh, why? Yep. I know why. Because you stealing. <laughs> right. <laughs> Bring it out. Read. The book of John, chapter 11 and verse 47. Uh -huh. Then gathered the chief priests. And the Pharisees a council and said, what do we? For this man doth many miracles. So these Pharisees and these priests are, the, <clears throat> are your modern day Christian pastors today, right? So now they, these uh, Pharisees, they, uh, again, they're having a meeting, right? Just like these pastors, they're having these secret meetings, right? Read. If we let him thus alone, all men will believe on him. So this man is talking about Christ, right? Because Christ is out here teaching the people. He actually hitting the people. Just like what we trying to do. We trying to hit exactly. our people with the word of God. Because believe it or not, through this word, this will go bring forth change. A lot of our people are watching and seeing the hypocrisy behind these churches. And at the same time, they are changing their lives, repenting, coming back to the laws of God. And the process of our people coming back into the laws of God and repenting, they're losing the members because they're leaving the church. So they tired of that BS, bro. Our people know ain't no change in that. They tired of it. Right. And in the process of our people leaving the church, our people are changing, right? So now you're losing members, and guess what else you're losing? You're losing money. Oh, and you know they hate that. They hate losing that almighty dollar. He That's what like it's he all about. Cry, bro. He look like he finna cry. Look at him. He look like he about to cry. Not because you're losing members. You're like, you don't give a damn about the people. You right. look, the only thing you're concerned about is that bag. And he tried to make it say like, and you didn't even tell me right. why you left? Man, get out of here, man. But they'll never say that on, on, on no. their broadcast. No. They will never say that on that platform that that's the reason why they're concerned about losing members. Right. They're not. They're not going to do that. You got some more? Read on. Finish up. And the Romans shall come. No, so I'll start back at verse 48. Verse 48. If we let him thus alone, all men will believe on him. So if we keep going the way we're going, people are going to come out that church eventually. Read. And the Romans shall come and take away both our place and nation. And the Romans today is um, parallel to the government right now because the government is the one that set these churches up, right? Yep. Because I know Bishop did a uh, broadcast a couple uh, months ago, right, about getting money and getting loans, right, for their church, right? Or if you to get a, a loan to establish a church, you got to preach their doctrine. You got to preach that Jesus is white. But they yep. So, but when we go out there and teach our people that Christ is a black man, like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You read out the same book and the same book said Christ is black, but you got a white Jesus in your church. Or they might say it don't matter what Christ looked like. But wait a minute. He's a black man. Now, I got to get about this church. Something ain't right. A lot of flaws in Christianity. They losing members and they losing money. Our people going to continue to leave. Right. 
You got some more on that? Uh, is it more? Is it more? That's it. That's it on that. So here, let's make sure we keep in tally. We got a damn matchmaker. Uh-huh. We got a damn thief. thief. And then we got a, a, a dis, disgruntled, covetous spit man. That's right. what we got right here. He is upset that he has lost a head in his church that was giving him tithes. So, so, so far, Christianity is hands down. Yeah. Nope. Zero. Thumbs down. Thumbs down for Christianity. Right. It ain't no argument. And we need y'all to explain this. We not done. We got more for Christianity. Explain <laughs> this stupidity. I need y'all to explain. This is another one of your kings. Roll tape. Is this your king? Roll tape. Wow. What is he saying? Explain this. This is stupidity. Look at it. You got the simple brother. The, the, is that a sister back there playing the drums? I think that's a brother. Terrible. You Right, you can't even tell. Look at this. How does this help our people? And if you listen closely, you can hear the black woman say, yes! Right. Just keep watching. Look at this stupidity. This don't make no damn sense. Look, what's look, the, what's look, the, look at the black woman in the back. It's always one. You got, you got somebody back there on their knees crying. Look at this. And really deep down, what's the edification in this? Like, there is no edification. This is stupidity. Theatrics. Look at this. They done wrapped his simple behind up and he's still singing with his face covered with the microphone. You can't make this up. Look at, look. Right. Simple as hell. You hit a black woman, pause it. Pause it. Pause it. Do you hit a black woman? Yes! This is stupidity. The black woman was the main, the main one that, 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 that filled up the church seats. The main supporters. This is not going to make black men stop gangbanging. This is not going to make young girls stop being hoes. This is going to make our people turn away from the Bible because right. they got the Bible in their hand, but when they see this foolishness, they like, man, brothers like, man, I'm gone. What is what is this? I'm out of here. Keep playing. This is stupidity. Keep watching. They gonna close the casket in his simple behind for to keep singing with his face wrapped up with the microphone. Look at him. Look at him. Look at him. What is this supposed to do? Nothing. Simple as hell. Pause that. Pause that. Pause that. I'm a pastor. And pause I, So you mean tell me people wake up at I'm 8 o'clock in the morning just to go to this every Sunday? Wake up every Sunday to watch this. Bruh. To sit there and listen to this. Get Proverbs 14. Because the Bible says something about that. Mm-hmm. When you constantly sit up here and watch things like this, Proverbs 14 and verse, is it 12? I think that's what I'm looking for. Mm-hmm. No, nah, no, 15. Yeah, that's it right there. Proverbs 14, 15. Read that. The book of Proverbs, chapter 14, 15? Yeah, yep. 14, 15. Chapter 14 and verse 15. The simple believeth every word. Mm. Read that again. The simple believeth every word. The simple. You brothers and sisters with the simple mind, and it's mainly black women. You got to be simple to sit up here and sit through that. How does this change you? How, How does our people benefit from his simple behind having brothers pick him up Wrap him up in a blanket and close the casket. What? What is this? Put him right. 
They closed the casket and his simple be behind still singing and hymning. <laughs> what is this? is this? Who in their right mind will even lay in the coffin if you still alive? Come on, man. I'm going to play dead. Come on, man. Just play dead. Read it again. The simple believeth every word. The simple, the unwise. You will believe everything somebody tell you. That's why a pastor can steal $1.3 million and say, God told me to steal this money. Right. God told me and my wife to steal it. <laughs> and you're going to keep going. You're going to keep going to church, sitting there listening to that BS. Even though why? the Bible say thou shalt not steal. Right. The Bible say thou shalt not steal, See? but you're going to believe every word. Why? Read that again. The simple believeth every word. Finish that up. But the prudent man looketh well to his going. The wise man or woman, they will look well to their going. They're going to examine things. You said God told you to steal. Let me go in the Bible. Right. Does the Bible say that God will tell me to steal? That's what the prudent, prudent mean wise. The prudent is going to search and seek out things. When you simple, somebody can tell you anything. Like right. they got a saying, somebody could piss in the cup and tell you it's apple juice. Because you simple. You simple. Ain't no way in hell. And even though you put it to your, your mouth, you could smell the piss and still believe it's still apple juice. This is our people. Like the scriptures say, the simple believe in every word. Now, speaking of prudence, let's go to, uh, let's continue on with that prudence, right? Bring it because out. a prudent person, he will search the scriptures, right? Let's go to uh, Proverbs 12 and uh, 23. Bring it out. Because a prudent person, he ain't going to believe everything. He going to search it out and do his research, right? And that's what we all want you all to do. Do your research. Don't take our word for it. We're showing you these clips and we're going through the Bible. Now, you be the judge and do your own research to determine whether or not Christianity is true or not. So far, thumbs down, uh, four. We four, right? Four Read. thumbs down. Right. Read that. The book of Proverbs, chapter 12 and verse 23. Uh -huh. A prudent man concealeth knowledge. See, a prudent man would consider knowledge, right? Because they would seek out the knowledge. They would do their research. They would do the diligent search to determine whether or not, man, is this right? This don't make no sense. Let me, right. look, for, let me look into this. Read on. But the heart of the fools proclaimeth foolishness. Right. So the heart of the fools will proclaim foolishness, right? Because if you go sit in this church... And think there's a spiritual message with this brother. Oh, you can't. I'm sorry. You a fool. You can't make this up. You a fool. What message is in that? And he's a fool too, that pastor. You know it. He a fool. And the brothers that's carrying him, they fools. Everybody in that church. Hey, now the brothers that's carrying him, they probably getting paid. <laughs> they let me wrap his silly ass up. Shit, this is, hey, bro, he going to give oh, us man. $200 a piece. Let me wrap his ass up. But, then you got the ones playing the, playing the drums in the back smiling. They probably getting paid, too. They up there. That whole music is demonic. It gets you oh, in you that Christianity it. spirit. Get you, you in the Christian it. spirit. But this is. So, but people still waking up at 8 o'clock in the morning on Sunday, yes. right? Yes. They still waking up early in the morning on Sunday. And them the most violent people, too. Yeah, I bet. Most violent. Let's see what we got next. So we go from Christianity. Now we going into more science. This more is something science. else that our people flock to. Right, because say if you if say if you escape the Christian church. Right. So you escape the Christian church and you want to be into more science because you claim that there's some truth in that. Let's find out though. Let's see if it's actually an escape. Mm. Let's see. Do not touch me. Grab my stuff. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. You're under arrest. I am not. Excuse me. I am not under arrest. I am not under arrest. This is excuse me. No. No. Excuse me. No. Excuse me. Jerome Bay. I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. I cannot sit here. I just can't. This man in the courthouse telling police not to touch him. He's in the courthouse. This is the stupidity when you follow these dumb doctrines. Right. You cannot go in the courthouse and do what you want to do. But why will our brothers and sisters in more science do this? Because they think they're sovereign. Mm -hmm. They think they are sovereign. They say silly things. I don't have to get a state ID. I don't have to get a driver's license because I'm sovereign. Huh? Let's see where sovereignty come from. Wisdom of Solomon 13. Let's see where sovereignty come from. 
science. And I'm gonna tell y'all, y'all follow this boy science stuff. These brothers are gonna get you locked up right. or worse. They be up here arguing with police. License and registration. I don't have to give you license and registration because my people were born on this land. Or they and give I have you the these, peace treaty. Or they give you all these, they come up with, they got these documents out their pocket. <laughs> they don't want to, they don't want to follow the white man documents, or they don't believe in documents and then pull out documents. <laughs> You can't make this up, man. Read. Reverse. Wisdom of Solomon 13, I think it's 4. Sovereignty come from the highest. It's right up in there. I ain't looking at it. Wisdom of Solomon. Wisdom of Solomon 13. Let me see. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Wisdom of Solomon 6 and 3. Add the numbers. Well, yeah, oh, more flop. documents don't work. How about just doing what you're supposed to do? Obey the laws of the land. That's all you got to do, bro. This is, this is the definition of kicking against the pricks. Wisdom of Solomon 6 and 3. Biblical Wisdom of Solomon chapter 6 and verse 3. For power is given you of the Lord. Who does power come from? Read it again. For power is given you of the Lord. Does it say Documents. For power is given you of the Lord. Power is given to you from the Lord. And what else for the more science? And sovereignty from the highest. Sovereignty come from God. I'm a newsflash to my more science brothers and sisters. Right. We are not sovereign yet. We still have to pay taxes. We still have to pay bills. We still have to abide by the rules in the land that we live in. You're not sovereign. When you travel, you got to get permission to leave. You got to get passports and this and that. Right. You're not sovereign. If you keep listening to these people, you're going to get hurt out here, bro. Period. Read on. For power is given you of the height. Uh huh. You of the Lord. And sovereignty from the highest. Uh huh. Who shall try your works and search out your counsels? Hey, from the get uh, Daniel chapter. No, not Daniel. Let's go Romans 13. Yeah, let's bring that up. Romans 13. So sovereignty come from the most high. It don't come from your documents. You keep listening to these people, they're going to get you locked up, or you're going to be another video of a traffic stop going wrong. Right. Because you don't want to pull out your documents. And it's all, it, it, it all has a spirit of rebellion at the end of the day. <laughs> That's all it is, bro. Well, all you got to do is just do what you're supposed to do. Rebellious as hell. We're going to finish up the video, too. <laughs> Romans 13 and 1. Start at verse 1. Right. The book of Romans, chapter 13 and verse 1. Let every, let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. So it said, let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. Be subject, submit to the higher powers, the laws that be. Read. For there is no power but of God. There is no power but of God. Why? Read. The powers that be are ordained of God. God set all these powers that be in place. Period. Read. It has to be order. Right. It got to be order. Read. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power. Like he's doing. He in the courthouse resisting the power. Read. Resisteth the ordinance of God. Damn. Can we get a bomb? Read that again. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power. Resisteth the ordinance of God. I don't need no state ID. I don't need no driver's license. I don't got to sign the deed to the house. I could just move in because my family and my forefathers, they was born here on this land. And because, you know, the peace treaty of 1890, Negro, if you don't shut up. Right. Everything you saying, it's that's documentation, but they don't want to follow documents. I, I don't understand this. Read. And they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. You going to get locked up. Right. Or some uh, a beat down by the authorities. Because you don't want to follow the laws of the land. And it had to go down like that. Right. Press play. Let's see if they go honor his, uh, his uh, papers, his right. sovereign papers. <laughs> Let's see if he's sovereign. Because <laughs> he got some papers. Bay, on, on behalf the of the matter, Murphy matter. And he, excuse me, we came in special appearance on the Murphy matter. And he is it's attempting. Judge is abandoned ship. Judge is abandoned ship. Hey, the police me, officer, judges, like, warrant. Uh, back up. Anyway, back up. Yes. Right. Send another officer. They ain't listening to nothing his simple behind saying. Read. I mean, 
play. A special appropriate persona on the Murphy matter. And he has and he has a banish him. Do not. He has him. proof that he is not Andre have, Murphy. Do not touch him. He's I not Andre. He's not Andre Murphy. Oh, there you go. So much blood there. Yeah. I need bad numbers. They done. Bad numbers Snap. and everything. Done. I got them. Knock hey, his hat Greg. off and everything. Oh. Geronimo, don't resist. Geronimo, don't resist. No power in that fence. I'm not resisting. I'm not resisting. The KFC. He's not resisting. That's they call it. Ain't no power in that fence, man. I'm telling you. Like, take this damn hat off. Y'all keep on. Keep on following this madness, and you're going to find yourself in a world of hurt. Obey the laws of the land. Right, because this could have ended real bad for the brother. Very. Let me, let's, let's, let's get the scripture. Let's go to Sirach chapter 9 and verse uh, 13. Bring it out. Because, like you stated before, we have to obey the law. According to the Bible, we have to obey the laws of the land. It's that simple. Because the laws of the land are ordained by God. Exactly. You in the courthouse and under the judicial system is based on the Bible. But you think you're sovereign. Or they right. They think. It's a thought. It's, it's an imagination. Bring it out. Again, it's just a spirit of rebellion that's right here. Let's get that. Read that. The book of Sirach, chapter 9 and verse 13. Uh -huh. Keep thee far from the man that have power to kill. Do what? Keep thee far from the man that have power to kill. Now, these uh, police officers, these betas, they got guns. Bring it out. This could have ended real bad. Read on. So shalt thou not doubt the fear of death. Uh-huh. And if thou come into him, make no fault. Make no what? Make no fault. But this brother is at fault because he, he's not cooperating with the betas. He's not cooperating, right? All you have to do is cooperate. Read on. Lest he take away thy life presently. Mm -hmm. Remember that thou goest in the midst of snares. But wait a minute. He's supposed to be sovereign, though. But we in the midst of snares. <laughs> According to them. So, According to them. So your, your sovereign, quote, unquote, sovereign papers go protect you from the snares. Bring it out. Read. And that thou walkest upon the battlements of the city. Only sovereigns from God, brothers and sisters. That's it. We can never rise above the status of our oppression. So meanwhile, you, quote, unquote, allegedly sovereign, but, let, but we still being oppressed. Tell that, to the, tell that to our so-called Native American brothers on the reservations. But you sovereign, though. Bring it out. Our brothers suffering... Number one, alcoholism on the reservations, but you sovereign. We still getting gunned down on the streets, but you sovereign. Come on. It's a, it's a selfish, rebellious spirit. That's all it is, man, and, and it's stupidity. Let's see the other dumb doctrine that we got. All this stuff that you seeing, brothers and sisters, we got to leave it alone. You got to leave this stuff alone. You're not connected to God right. in this stuff, and this stuff is going to ultimately lead to your ruin. Now, let's get the other dumb doctrine. The other dumb doctrine that our people are wrapped up in is Egyptology. Now, let's see this stupidity that's going to be said. More stupidity. Let's see. Let's see. We just got to come back to God. That's it. We just got to repent. That's it. At the end of the day, like you said, it's rebellious. God, God is in the word. God is in the Bible. This is where you find God. Right. But we want to try Buddhism. Like on the last show, you got right. some of our people going to Buddhism. We want to try uh, uh, Islam. We want to try Christianity. Scientology. Scientology. We're going to get to that later. Every, we keep going around the right way. And then when we get in these situations, we're looking crazy. Now, here's for you Egyptologists. Right, we keep going around the wrong way and still going in circles. Come on, man. In some cases, God forbid, we run into a brick wall. Right. Press yes. play. All right, you know, who's going to stop me from writing if I got the power? You told an audience last night that you saw, I think, in a tomb in Egypt. Yeah. You saw it with your own two eyes, right? Yes. You told me that Moses, there were more than 10 commandments. Moses just took 42. Five. The negative good. confessions. Long, Moses isn't supposed to have been born until 1349 BC. The Africans were already in the 18th dynastic period. Akhenaten, who died before Moses was born, and uh, Enotep, 
who, who died more than 2,000 years before the birth of Moses, and others at the Grand Lodge of Mem had 42 laws called now the negative confession, one for each known. They go like this, I have not killed man nor woman. I have not spoken ill of the gods. Moses is supposed to born in Egypt, they said, at a place called Succoth. Already, um, it says that Moses get the Ten Commandments of Mount Sinai. It's, Mount Sinai is still in Africa, right? Wait, stop, 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 stop. So this brother is trying to claim that the commandments didn't come from God, but came from his fellow Africans. Egypt. You know what is going for you Egyptologists. Everything come from Egypt, right. as y'all say. Play. Egypt, they said, at a place called Succoth. Already, um, it says that Moses get the Ten Commandments of Mount Sinai. It's, Mount Sinai is still in Africa, right? The Sinai Peninsula is a part of Egypt. More so, is it possible for Moses to be born in Egypt, educated in Egypt? At age 85, he's still in Egypt, and he did not learn the negative confessions is it possible for you to go to school, born in the United States, go to kindergarten, uh, uh, elementary, junior high school, high school, and college, and never heard of the United States Constitution? Then it would have been possible, impossible for Moses when everybody had to read the negative confession five times a day for Moses not to have seen those 42 laws and extracted 10 of, the, 10 of them, leave 32 more. Now, if you could, get, you could go to the temple of Setaiwan at Abydos to go to the... the, the and we letting it play. I want y'all to hear this stupidity. Go ahead. You think he kingdom, knows some? Go to the temple of Edfu, where you would, by the way, see the story of an immaculate conception and a virgin birth 4,100 years before the Miriam Jesus story. Okay, I, stop, I right. stop, stop. Negroes hurl out a bunch of information that they think they know, and then they stop it, then they do the little, like he just did <laughs> something. No, no. Moses did not get the commandments from no 42 confessions of right. Ma'at, negative confessions of Ma'at. Negative. Let's, let's, let's go into the Bible and let's go precept upon precept and see. First thing we got to deal with, he was talking about right. pharaohs in Egypt that was around before Moses trying to state that his 42 negative confessions was prior and all of this. Let's see how far back the commandments go. Give me Genesis 26 and 5. Let's get it. The commandments of God been around way before your 42 confessions of my negative confessions. Right. The commandments of God been around before Moses. They just got reintroduced to us when we came out of Egypt. Genesis 26 and 5. The book of Genesis chapter 26 and verse 5. Shows how much you know. This for our Egyptologists. Read that. Mm -hmm. Because then Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge. My commandments. Wait, Abraham kept what? Kept my charge. Uh-huh. My commandments. His what? My commandments. His what? My commandments. One more time for the Egyptologists. And kept my charge, my commandments. Uh-huh. Right. My statues. Uh-huh. And my law. And my what? And my law. And my what? And my law. That's for you Egyptologists out there that don't know a damn thing. This brother don't know a damn thing. The commandments been around way before Moses, way before your 42 confessions of Ma'at. Right. From there. Now, because he said Moses got the Ten Commandments from Egypt, from the 42 negative confessions. Let's get Acts 7 and 22. I'm going to be quick because I know officer got something over there. Mm -hmm. Give me Acts 7 and 22. I'm going to show you something about Moses. We're going to show you something about Moses. Acts 7 and 22. The book of Acts chapter 7 and verse 22. We can't let you lie on the forefathers like that. Read that. And Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians mm -hmm. and was mighty in words and deeds. Uh -huh. And when he was full 40 years old. That's it, 22? It, Read the whole 22. That's all we need. 22. Watch this. Read 22. And Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians. Because somebody may say, oh, oh, I got you. I got you. No, no, you don't got nothing. Right. Read, it said Moses was learned in all the ways of the Egyptians and what? And was mighty in words and deeds. So, yes, Moses was learned in all the ways of the Egyptians. What did God tell Moses when Moses was at the burning bush? Give me Exodus chapter 3. You talking about some Moses extracted the Ten Commandments from the 42 laws of my eye. 
Moses was raised up in the ways of the Egyptians. And what did the Lord tell Moses when he confronted him? Get Exodus 3, verse 5. Yep. The book you of Exodus, know. chapter 3 and verse 5. Mm -hmm. And he said, draw not nigh hither. Put off thy shoes from off thy feet. Do what? Put off thy shoes from off thy feet. Now, some of you, you will say, oh, he just took his shoes off. No, that means something else. It wasn't just take your shoes off. We're going to show you what he was saying to him when he said that. What did he mean by that? Take your shoes off. Ecclesiastes 5, right. verse 1. Talking about he took the Ten Commandments from the 42 laws of my eye. You out your mind. Read that. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 5 and verse 1. Read. Keep thy foot when thou goest to the house of God. Uh-huh. And be more ready to hear than to give the sacrifice of fools. So when he told Moses, take your shoes off, he was telling him, leave that crap that you learned in Egypt behind you. Leave that stuff out right. there. I don't want to hear nothing from Egypt. So Moses wasn't extracting nothing from no Egyptians. Right. That's for you Egyptologists out here. He left that stuff alone. I like to uh, bring something out, right? Because, Go ahead. Because his, uh, debate, his debate is that Moses received the commandments from his fellow Africans, right? Is it far-fetched that the commandments was already here before Egypt? Bring that, it out. So in order for us to determine that, let's go in, let's, let's do some lineage tracking of the Africans. Where do they descend from, right? Because when you read out the Bible, you're not going to find Africans in the Bible, right? right. Let's get the uh, Zolivet Compact Dictionary. Let's look up Ham, right? Bring it out. So some of you might not never heard of Ham before. No, I'm not talking about Ham meats, right? Right. They think you're talking about meat. No, no. I'm not talking about green eggs and ham, right? Let's find out about Ham, right? For some of y'all who might know, um, I don't want to give it away. But let's, let's deal with some logic, right? Get that. Uh, the definition of ham out the Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary. Bring it out. The these, these are uh, a reference book uh, based on what scholars did their research on, right? Read that. Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary. Uh -huh. The definition of ham. The youngest son of Noah. So ham was the youngest son of Noah, right? Read. Born probably about 96 years before the flood. Uh-huh. And one of the eight persons to live through the flood. So we all might have heard of the story about Noah and the flood, right? And after the flood, Noah survived along with his sons, Noah's wife and his son's wives, right? And Ham was the youngest son of Noah, right? Read. He became the progenitor of the dark races, not the Negro. So put that up on the screen, right? So Noah, uh, Ham is the progenitor of the dark races, not the Negroes, right? You know what it's saying? Not all metanated people are the same, right? We don't come from the same. Let's see yep. where does ham come from. Read. Bring it out. But the Egyptians. The who? The Egyptians. Wait a minute. So ham comes from the Egyptians. So the Egyptians are descendants from ham, one of Noah's youngest sons, right? Who else? Ethiopians. Uh-huh. Libyans. Uh-huh. And Canaanites. So these are the dark races, right? And out of the dark races, we're talking about the Egyptians, right? And out of the Egyptians, they descend from Ham, which was Noah's youngest son. Now, isn't it, it's not far-fetched that Noah taught his sons the commandments, right? Yeah. Let's prove that Noah knew the commandments, right? Damn. I'm trying to establish something here, right? We're talking about the Africans, right? Because this man said that Moses got the laws from the Africans, but... The Africans, quote unquote, the Egyptians are descendants of Ham, which was Noah's son. Damn. So let's see. Drop a bomb, man. <laughs> Drop a bomb. So let's see what type of man Noah was. Let's go to 2 Peter chapter 2 and verse 5. Uh oh. They're not going to like this. Let's see if Noah taught his sons the commandments, right? Because Noah predates Egypt. Bring it out. Read. The book of 2 Peter, chapter 2 and verse 5. Uh -huh. And spare not the old world, but save Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness. A preacher of what? A preacher of righteousness. Whoa, so Noah was preaching righteousness. What's righteousness? Deuteronomy, let's get it. Might as well get it, right? He was preaching righteousness, Bring it out. right? Read, get that, hurry up. Let's get that. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6 and verse 25. Uh-huh. 
And it shall be all righteousness. It should be our what? All righteousness. The same righteousness that Noah was preaching while he was on earth. Read. If we observe to do all these commandments. Do what? All these commandments. So the righteousness consists of the commandments. And who had the commandments? Noah had the commandments, right? Damn. And he taught his sons, one of his sons, Ham, which was a progenitor of the Egyptians. So don't you think he passed that down to his sons and his sons' sons? So they had the commandments. That's the reason why they had the commandments, because Noah was preaching righteousness. He was preaching the commandments. Is there more on that? If we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God, as he commanded us. So let's go back to uh, for Second Peter, right? So we understand Noah was a preacher of righteousness, which consists of God's commandments. Read on. Go back. The book of Second Peter, chapter 2 and verse 5. Uh -huh. And spare not the old world, but save Noah the eighth person, right, a because preacher. Of, because Noah was saved from the flood, right? He was a preacher of what? A preacher of righteousness. He was a preacher of God's commandments, of the law, statutes, and commandments. Is it more? Bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. So the point is that Noah was preaching the commandments. Noah had the commandments. He knew the commandments. He taught his sons. And which was a progenitor of the Egyptians. So that makes that's a logical reason why the commandments was has always been around. Exactly. And that's why in a they, they terrible 42 negative confessions, you might see a similarity. Right. Because who do they descend from? They descend from Ham, like you just brought out. Right. Because Noah taught the commandments, but the full understanding of the commandments came from those that come from the line of Shem. Right. But Moses did not get the commandments from the Egyptians and the commandments predate the Egyptians. Right. Understand that. So we got more for Christianity. We ain't done with them yet. I know the Christians getting pissed off. We don't give a damn. Play that. This is what happens in the Christian church. Maybe it's hope right in this video. Let's, Let's see. Out. There might be a, a small glimmer of hope. No, we gosh. need the sound, man. We need the sound. Right. They got to hear what's going on in the house of God. Go back. Sound. Sound. What the hell going on here? Wait, what's going on in the church? I know. <laughs> Y'all tripping. <laughs> Hold on. say all women in this well, church. Apparently the pastor had a little side chick. He got his little side chick pregnant. And she came up in the church like, what's up? Ready to fight the, the wife. Ready to fight the first lady. No, no, no. Let me tell you what happened. Wait, Yo, man. So the church, the, the pastor had a side chick pregnant? This is what you wake up Sunday morning to go hey, to? the hell is this? We still need the Christians to explain this. You better I, off staying home watching Lifetime. I... I I guess, man, like, it, it's that bad, bro. You better home stay home watching Netflix. The same drama you see on Netflix, you've seen in the church. Same thing. No wonder people coming out these churches. This is why people leaving. This is why people leaving. Get uh, Ezekiel 26 and 22. I'm probably saying it backwards. This is ridiculous. Man. Why do these things happen? This is why. Yep, 22 and 26. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 22 and verse 26. Her priests have violated my law. The pastors, right. pastor, priest, preacher, seer, prophet, all the same. That's what they claim to be. This is what they, they, uh, they appear to be. This is what they profess themselves to be. God says they have violated his law. Why right. do they, how do they violate his law? They will have the Bible in their hand, and you will see this foolishness, this filth that we watching on this video. This man supposed to be a preacher, a pastor, and he got a side chick. He got a hoe on the side. That's not scriptural. The Bible say if a man will be a bishop, and I'm going to get that after we finish this. Right. This is how they violate the law. The Bible say if a man going to be a bishop or a leader, he got to be blameless. We're going to go into that. Read on. Her priests have violated my law and have profaned my holy things. They did what? Have profaned my holy things. This is why when the prophets go out and they trying to teach the people, 
we got to battle through all the confusion that has been put out here by the Christian church. Right. This is a young girl right here. She looks like she's about 11, 12, and she's watching this catastrophe. She's watching this foolishness. Believe it or not, this is psychological right here. It's going to leave yep. a psychological mark on her till she grow up. And that's why a lot of our people that join these dumb doctrines, they seen stuff like this. Like on the Buddhism right. video, you had a lot of our people, uh, so-called black, like, yeah, when I was in the church, it was too much of this going on, too much of that going on. And that's why they left and ended up in the other stuff that's a trap, that's even worse. So Christianity draws people away from the true there God. There you go. Oh, man. There you go. These, Hey, hold on. Can I, let's get a... Uh, hold on. I got, I got okay, some okay. more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Finish yeah, yeah, that yeah, up. Finish that up. up. Her priests have violated my law mm -hmm. and have profaned my holy things. Read. They have put no difference between the holy and profane. Ain't no right or wrong in the Christian church. No. Nah. They won't even tell you what you are supposed to eat and are not supposed to eat. So they damn sure ain't finna tell you about what's sin and what's not. They tell you God hate the sinner. It's your year greater. God ain't mad at you. He mad about you. All right. these dumb things they say in the church. They don't put a difference between right and wrong. Read. Neither have they showed difference between the unclean and the clean. Read. And have hid their eyes from my Sabbaths. They don't even keep the Sabbath. That's the first feast day. That's the first holy day. They don't keep the Sabbath. Oh, but they say every day is a Sabbath. Right. Read. And I am profaned among them. Uh-huh. Her princes in the midst of them are like wolves ravening the prey. That's it on that. That's it on that. Uh, let me get another scripture. Let's go right into that because these these pastors have violated God's laws. They're not teaching God's laws. They're not distinguishing between good and bad. Read. Uh, let's get John chapter three and start at verse seven. Because I'm gonna parallel again with the Pharisees and Sadducees. Because the Pharisees today are these modern day pastors today, right? Let's get that. The book of John chapter three and verse seven. Uh huh. Marvel not that I said unto I'm sorry, thee. sorry, Matthew 3 and 7. My bad, my bad. Matthew 3 and 7. Matthew 3 and verse 7, excuse me. The book of Matthew, chapter 3 and verse 7. Uh-huh. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees. So this is John the Baptist, right? You know, he had his ministry at one point with baptism, right? But when the Pharisees and Sadducees came to John, read. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism. Which are today are your modern day pastors, right? Read on. He said unto them, uh -huh. O generation of vipers. O generation of who? O generation of vipers. Uh -huh. Who have warned you to flee from the wrath to come. So these pastors are vipers. Praying on the people. Poisoning the people with this false doctrine of Christianity, right? Drawing people away from God with their theatrics, with their lies. Read. Yep. Bring forth, therefore, fruits, meat for repentance. And that's always been our message at the end of the day for you pastors. Just repent. Repent. We ain't saying for you to follow us, but repent and teach the word of God as thus saith the Lord. And that's right. Congregation right. That's all we. That's all we telling our people from there. Let's get our next video. Let's get our next video. And that's the Christian Church. That is the Christian Church. Next we have Cyan. Ecology. This is another religion. If you remember the first episode, it showed all the religions our people was in in one of them videos. One of them is Scientology. Let's hear what's involved in Scientology. So people are escaping Christianity. They go into Mormonism, and we see that Mormonism ain't worked out for ain't working out for nobody. It get you killed actually. Bring it out. So let's see if Scientology works. Let's see. Because I was when I was growing up in school, I actually liked science. So let's see if this works out. Let's see. Is supposed to be an Venia is supposed to be an intergalactic warrior, Lord. So I would say about 90% of people in Scientology have never heard of Venia. So you don't learn about Venia until you get to OT3, which would probably cost you 100,000 pounds to get there. So most people don't even make it that far. So I know that's probably throwing y'all off. Y'all probably like, who the hell is Xenu? It's supposed to be some important character in this Scientology uh, religion. Mm -hmm. But uh, what you're going to find out is how they lure people into the religion. I also wanted to point this out. This is a series called The Informer. You see people masked up because they are whistleblowers. The uh -huh. stuff they talking about, 
may get them killed or their lives ruined. They're giving the ins and outs of this stuff. Let's play. I first got involved with the church after reading a book of things. I hadn't ever heard anything about Scientology before that, so I didn't know what a cult was. I was Wait. in my mid-twenties. He said, I didn't know what a cult was. Many of you brothers and sisters that's in this truth, your family members, people that know you will say that you're in a cult. No, a cult is when you blindly follow things. You don't, right. you don't ask any questions. You can't explain what you're a part of. We can explain what we follow. We can explain what we are into. Or you brainwash to feel like you're obligated to join this uh, exactly. cult, cult. That's what we about to see. Roll tape. I told you before that, so I didn't know what a cult was. I was in my mid-twenties, and so I did contact the church, and I went in there, and they had me do a personality test. They what? Stop. Me. A personality test. So they had him do a personality test. Play. I contacted the church, and I went in there, and they had me do a personality test. They kind of told me that I was a complete mess and I needed to do some Scientology courses to sort myself out. They actually used the three personality tests as how to recruit people. That's the number one way of doing it. It produces like a graph to show where you're happy in life and where you're not happy in life. So wait, stop. So their personality test determines or shows you why you're happy or not happy in life. Right. A test. This Scientology test, it, it, it just predict your future. This is what our people are following. Read. I mean, play. It produces like a graph to show where you're happy in life and where you're not happy in life. And they're looking for where you're not happy in life or what it is about yourself that you'd like to improve and that they call your dream. And then once they find out what your dream is, they will use that against you. Mm, so they will make stop. Sense. So once they find out what your problem is, your hiccup is, they will use that against you. Right. Play. And then once they find out what your doing is, they will use that against you. Because they will make you believe that only someone told you can help you handle Stop! that. Stop! They will use your shortcoming in Scientology and then tell you, they will use the, 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 the shortcoming, the chink in your armor against you and tell you that the only thing that will help you is Scientology. Mm -hmm. That is a lie. We're going to show you what will help our people. Get Wisdom right. of Solomon 16 and 12. What will help our people? What's going to heal our people? It ain't Scientology, and we're going to show one of our people that was wrapped up in it. Wisdom of Solomon 16 and 12. The book of Wisdom of Solomon chapter 16 and verse 12. Because he said, this, this guy here, I don't know if he's a brother or not, he said they will use your shortcoming and then tell you that because you have this shortcoming, right. you need to believe in Scientology. That's the only thing that's going to help you. Read. For, for, it was not, for it was neither herb nor mollifying plaster uh -huh. that restored them to health, uh -huh. but thy word, O Lord, which healeth all things. The word of God is the only thing. That will help you right. with that shortcoming. The word of God is the only thing that will heal your soul. Not some dumb religion. And you got people in Scientology and it, has, it hasn't done anything for their life. Press play. Because they will make you believe that only Scientology can help you handle that problem. Within a few months of first going there, I started to work there. And they spent some time trying to recruit me to join them. I wasn't initially planning to do that. They basically wore me down. They put me through what they call a, a recruitment interview. And they put me there for hours. And if I refused to sign the paper, they would say, OK, well, what I'd like to do is have a read of this and then give me some materials to read. And they'd have me start reading that. And then they'd go away and they'd come back an hour later and they'd start again. That's pretty much how they do everything how they get you to, to pay over money. So this one start asking you. Once I had agreed to do it, I had to sign a two and a half year contract. Then told hey, interrogation, right? Yeah. Almost. Hey, pause it. I know right now y'all like, that ain't true. We gonna get somebody that was in it. Everything this man spilling in this interview, 
It's a sister, one of our people. She going to say the exact same thing. Play. Between the time the rape, which turned out to not be true, I found myself working over 80 hours a week and earning under £5,000 a year. I was basically teaching people courses. I started at 9 o'clock in the morning and finished at 10 o'clock tonight, Monday to Friday. And at the weekends, I worked from 9 o'clock till 6 o'clock. I must have had about 10 days off in the whole time I worked there. They had you sign a contract um, which puts you down as a volunteer so they don't have to pay you. Okay, no. stop. That's wow. it. Let's see if... Oh, y'all just found something. Let's see. Let's get the next clip of one of our people that was in this dumb religion, this dumb doctrine that don't help our people. Press play. Let's... Let's get it to the timestamp 339. We probably ain't going to be able to go through the whole thing, so we may do some jumping. Wow. Let's see. Let's see. Because I know what people think when they see us. Y'all making stuff up. Let's see. Press play. Uh, one more thing. Didn't you dabble in the little Scientology for a while? Or okay, what was so that about? when I was homeless, when I was homeless, I was standing in line at Central Casting to be a background worker, right? Mm -hmm. And I was living in my car, and this Scientology guy approached me, and he's like, hey, this you can come and take these courses, and it'll help you with life and all that stuff, and uh, maybe we can help you find housing. And I was like, shit, I'll go. Like, And so I went and took a couple of courses, and then after like my third course, and it was like, I really, they were really helping me read better. Like I could read, but it's still not at a really good level. And they were helping me read better. And I thought, oh, this is cool. And then they asked me to join and be like a worker there, be a part of the flagship. And I, I was like, oh, uh, well, I'm homeless. So yeah, I mean, and they said they would give me a place to sleep. I have my own place. And they would give me $50 a month because they would Stop. cover Stop. Did not the man... Exactly. But Did not the man say the same thing in the interview? They was going to pay him to be uh, a volunteer and convince people to join it. She was homeless, so they really played on her situation. And then they got her to be a worker there, just like the man said. Press play. They would give me a place to sleep. I have my own place. And they would give me $50 a month because they would cover all the food and clothing and everything. And so I, only, I would need $50 for that. That's enough to buy a little weed. A little <laughs> weed and some maxi pads, right? Yeah. And so then um, I say, okay, and I, you have to sign this contract, like billion year contract. Wait a minute, Didn't the, he signed the contract too, right? The man said the same thing, bro. So all these stipulations, sign your life away, and I'm telling you, and y'all thought that we pulled that dude up just to be pulling him up. This sister was in it too, but she got out of it. Let's see why. But they call us a cult, though. Right. Thing. We a cult. We ain't make you sign no no contracts and none of that. Like, we ain't forcing nobody to work and, and, and volunteer and try to get recruits. Right. We don't do that. But this is the, the religions that our people run into. Those are the real cults. Press play. Say, okay, and I, you have to sign this contract, like billion-year contract. And, yeah. I, and I signed it. And then they had me go into these barracks, and there was bunk beds. And I don't do yes. bunk beds. I don't, I don't Come on, man. Come on, man. Pause that. it. Pause it. We don't make nobody go in right. no barracks. We don't make nobody go in some bunkers with bunk beds. We don't do that to people. We show them the word. They're either going to keep the commandments, come congregate, right. come learn. If they don't want to, they hit the door. We don't do that. But these false religions that you follow... They make you sign your life over, work for them, and make you stay in some bunkers. That's a cult. They prey on people. Man. Prey on people because she was homeless. That's how they got her. She needed a place to stay. She needed money. Right. Play. Bad things happen with bunk beds. I have had too many incidences with bunk beds. I don't deal with them, right? Mm -hmm. So I was like, I'm going to make a pallet on the floor. I'm going to sleep over here. They're like, no, you got to sleep in a bunk bed. I was like, I'm not sleeping in no bunk bed. So... They was demanding that I sleep in a bunk bed, and I went on this rampage. I kind of like lost it and was marching up, Jump and down up my to hallways six and yelling, Y'all not finna have me in no bunk bed. Y'all not finna have me out here like that. And then so we got like, skip over, it. And I kept on marching and yelling and stuff. And then finally, they was like, I, they got fed up with me and they tore up my contract and told right. me to wow, go. Wow, you got out. I drop it.
she had to act a fool to get up out of there. <laughs> they was adamant about her what? Laying in this bunk bed. You got to sleep in the bunk bed. That's a cult. They control your life. That's Try what a cult to control, does. Exactly. We don't control nobody life. We give you the word. You either going to keep the commandments or you ain't. You don't keep the commandments. You ain't going to be up in here. But we don't do all of this. This is cult-like behavior. These are the real cults. Give me Isaiah 30, verse 9 and verse 10. First, read verse 20 first. Because this is what y'all got to understand. Read that. The book of Isaiah, chapter 30 and verse 20. And though the Lord give you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction. Because we're going through adversity and affliction because of our sin. This right. is what none of these religions will teach you. Read. Yet shall not thy teachers be removed into a corner anymore. You see the prophets of God all over the earth. We all over the earth. Teaching you what? Right. Keep the commandments. Read on. But thine eyes shall see thy teachers. You see your teachers. We on the corners, on the streets, right in front of your face, dealing with you, showing you what you need to know so you can get salvation. Read. And thine ear shall hear a word behind thee, saying, this is the way. Uh-huh. Walk ye in it. Uh-huh. When ye turn to the right hand and when ye turn to the left. The commandments of God. God is the way that you should walk in. You should follow. Not these dumb doctrines. Right. But you'll end up in these dumb doctrines if this is your mindset, if this is your spirit. Jump up to verse 9. Verse 9. That this is a rebellious people. Didn't you just say that? Yeah. If it's, you it's rebellious, a rebellious spirit. If you got the rebellious spirit and you don't want to keep the commandments, you're going to end up in these things we showing you. Read. That this is a rebellious people. Uh-huh. Lying children. What? Lying children. Lying right. children. Read. Children that will not hear the law of the Lord. You don't want to hear the law of the Lord. Read. Would say to the seers, see not. Don't show me what I need to see, what I need to avoid. I right. like the state I'm in. It feels good. It ain't good for me, but it feels good. I don't want to hear what y'all are talking about. Like, uh, we like the prophets was just out and you had black women trying to justify twerking. You got the prophets telling them why twerking, why young girls should not be twerking. And you had older women right. ready to fight the prophets, cussing the prophets out because they was talking about how young girls should not be twerking. Why? Because this is that rebellious spirit. Read. We say to the CSC not and to the prophets. Prophesy not unto us right things. Don't tell me the good things. Don't tell me the good news. Right. That's what the gospel is. Read. Speaking to us smooth things. I want to hear what's, what feels good, what's pleasant to my ear. That's what all these religions do. They tell you what's pleasant to your ear, what make you feel good. Read. Prophesy deceits. Prophesy what? Prophesy deceits. They prophesy deceits. They tell you deceits. You want the prophets to prophesy deceits to right. you. We not going to do that. We going to tell you the truth, thus saith the Lord. We going to tell you to walk this way. This is the only way. That's it. There is no other pathway to, to God. There is no other pathway to salvation but keeping the commandments. But when you refuse that, you'll be tossed to and fro. Just another victim. With these doctrines. From there, get Ephesians 4 and 14. Then we're going to go to Thessalonians. Ephesians 4 and 14, and then we're going to get Thessalonians. This is what will happen. You refuse to keep the commandments, this is what's going to happen to you. Read that. The book of Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 14. Read. That we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro, and carried about with every wind of doctrine. That's what's going to happen. You rebel, you don't want to keep the commandments, the prophet's coming to you trying to show you the way you're supposed to walk, okay? You're going to get caught up in all of this foolishness. Right. You're going to be somewhere in a damn bunker on some bunk beds with people forcing you to lay down right here because it's a part of their ritual. You're going to be in some dumb doctrines or, or picking a man up and putting mm -hmm. him in a damn casket and don't know why you're doing that. 
That's not going to happen when you keep the commandments. That's why Christ said you don't know the truth and the truth shall make you free. You right. free of that stupidity that we was looking at. Because when you think about the wind, wind blows in all type of directions. Exactly. All type of directions and you wind up in like a tornado. Rolling around all over the place, dizzy, gone. And you're going to end up in everything. Get Thessalonians now. Uh, Second Thessalonians, I believe that is. Strong delusion. Oh, that's Second Thessalonians. Yep, Second Thessalonians. So y'all keep on kicking against the pricks, and you're going to end up in this stuff. And when you're in this stuff, you don't find God. You don't know. You feel like you don't know your purpose or why you're here. Read. The book of Second Thessalonians, chapter 2 and verse 11. And for this cause... God shall send them strong. Read, read uh, verse 10. 10. Yep. Verse 10. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness and them that perish. Read. Because they receive not the love of the truth. You don't want to hear the laws of God. You hate it. You despise it. Again, I'm going to plug the sit down again. Just like we saw in the sit down, so-called men of God did not want to hear the words of truth. Men Read. Vipers. Right. Vipers. They didn't want to hear the words of truth. It angered them to hear the words of God. Read. Because they received not the love of the truth uh -huh. that they might be saved. What is the purpose of you hearing the words of truth? That they might be saved. You're not going to be saved in none of these dumb doctrines we just went over tonight. Read. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusions that they should believe a lie. Okay. You don't want to serve God. Serve these doctrines. Right. And you're going to forever be walking around that same circle. Why am I here? What is my purpose? Why is this stuff happening to me? None of that stuff we went over here on these videos gives you answers. We know what does give you answers, the right. word of God. It's going to make you prosperous and give you success. That success ultimately is eternal life, getting the kingdom. That's right. Because these doctrines will lead you straight to destruction. You got something, officer? No, nah, that's it, man. This. Man, Christianity, hands down, trash. More science, hands down, trash. Scientology, hands down, deeper trash. So you want salvation? The only way to salvation is keeping God's commandments. The only way to heaven is keeping God's commandments. I got time for one more scripture. Let's make it to the point. Go ahead. Uh, John 14 and 6. Go into what you're just saying right there. John 14 Bring it and out. 6. Let's go to the word of Christ, mouth himself. Let's go to Christ himself, right? Let's go to the black Messiah. Get that? The book of John. Chapter 14, verse 6. The book of John, chapter 14 and verse 6. Read that. Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So Christ is the way. He's the truth. Read on. No man cometh unto, me, unto the Father but by me. So you're not going to get eternal life in Scientology. You're not going to get eternal life in Christianity. Bring it you're out. You're not going to get eternal life in more science or any doctrine for that matter. Christ is the way. We got to come back to it. You're only going to get Christ right here in this Bible. That's Does right. Does save the Lord right here. So we're the commercials next. Yeah, we got commercials.
This is a youth violence event guided towards the youth. So if we wanted to come out here to create a space and a platform for the young brothers, the young sisters, even ourselves, to begin to discuss and engage with the results of violence that's taking place in this city. Test, test. All right, shalom, we shalom. back. We back. We back. Now, we got one more video. <laughs> Another video of Christianity that we need our Christians to explain. Let's make sure we got it cued. Apparently, we can go on and on, I see. I see. This is, this is ridiculous. Play. I'm a pastor. Of course I preach. I'm a pastor. Of course I pray for people. I'm a pastor. Of course my armor bearers make sure I'm good. Armor bearer. I'm a pastor. Yes. She's, of course I got a cute She said she, she has an armor bearer. A woman. I'm a pastor. A woman said she has an armor bearer. Bruh. Putting her sandals on. What kind of armor bearer is that? You mean... Assistant? I mean, what the hell? Yeah, take it back, bro. This, this is ridiculous. This is what happens in these dumb doctrines. Play. And people still in Christianity yep. going to the church in 2024. Still going there. And they still waking up at Sunday morning for this? Yep. Oh, man. I'm a pastor. Of course my own girls make sure I'm good. I'm a pastor. Of course, I got a cute cup. I'm a pastor. Of course, she praise God. Come on, man. Come That's on, how you man. praise God by dancing and acting like a fool. According to Christianity, but when you don't read, when a simple believe every word, right. you'll follow all this. Let's first deal with her being a pastor. Bring it up. Give me Numbers twenty-seven. In verse 16, Numbers 27, verse 16, we're going to be quick. See what the Bible says real quick. The book of Numbers, chapter 27, and verse 16. Read. Let the Lord, the God of the spirits of all flesh, set a man mm. over the congregation. Maybe something wrong with my ears. I heard it. I heard it. You, you heard right. Let's read the Bible again, something that they don't read in the church. Should she be a pastor? Read it again. Let the Lord, the God of the spirits of all flesh, set a man over the congregation. It says set a man over the congregation, not a woman. Right. She's out of order. But I know y'all don't read the Old Testament. Let's go to the New. Give me 1 Timothy 2 and verse 11. Because the problem, that's another reason why Black women feel the church. A lot of y'all like being in that atmosphere because you have authority in there. Right. Give me 1 Timothy 2 and 11. The book of 1 Timothy, chapter 2 and verse 11. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. Mm -hmm. But I suffer not a woman to teach, mm -hmm. nor to uh, usurp authority over the man. What did God say? Nor to usurp authority over the man. That's what a lot of those women want to do. That's why they like the church. That's right. why in the church, they the head usher. They the head teacher, the, the bishop, the, the reverend. They are all those things. They have authority in the church. They get to tell men what to do in the church. That's that feminist spirit. Right. Going all the way back to Eve, they want to be equal with the man. In that church, that's when they get a little taste of some power. Give me uh, Revelation 2 and verse 20. Revelation 2 and 20 real quick. The oh, book man, of Re you, Revelation. You heard him with this one. The book of Revelation. Oh, wait a minute. This is the New Testament. Ain't that about something? This is the New Testament. Y'all favorite part of the Bible. We just read... First Timothy. Right. Now we in Revelation. This is the last book of the Bible, and it's in your favorite part, the New and I, Testament. And I got another New Testament for him. Oh, yeah. I'm going to make sure you get that, officer. <laughs> Read this. The book of Revelation, chapter 2 and verse 20. Whoa. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, mm -hmm. because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, 
which calleth herself a prophetess. Now I know Jezebel got killed in the Old Testament in the book of Kings. It's talking about that same spirit, that woman being set up in authority, right. being over the man, that same spirit. Christ was getting on the seven churches. In the church of Thyatira, it was a, a, a woman with that, Je that Jezebel spirit being over the man. And Christ was getting on them about allowing that. Read. Notwithstanding, I've had, I have a few things against thee, because thou suffereth that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication uh -huh. and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. And I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. Read. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into a great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. What is he saying? All y'all that's supporting her nonsense, you're going to get judged with her. Right. God can't use no men that follow behind women. Ain't no woman supposed to be running nothing. She's really? supposed to teach the children and the younger women. She's not supposed to be over the congregation. Right. Go ahead, but, officer. But when you examine the Jezebel spirit, didn't Jezebel kill the true prophets of God? Yes, she did. Yes, she did. So deep down, this Jezebel spirit, these women, these women pastors, they despise men's authority. Yep. Like you just stated, they want to be in the head seat. They want to be over people. They want to be over the man. They hate, they hate authority and they hate to submit. Jezebels hate the prophets of God. Right, and she got them killed. Which explained why them sisters was trying to fight the prophets. Right. And let's get, um, let's get another New Testament scripture. Bring it way. out. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 14. The book of 1 Corinthians. 34. Verse 34. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 34. Uh-huh. Let your women keep silence in the churches. Let your women do what? Let your women keep silence in the churches. We knew we read that the New Testament said, let your women keep silent in the churches. So you, we don't. <laughs> for it is not permitted unto them to speak. Right. It's unpermitted for them to speak because why? Women go off their emotions. They say some dumb things. That's why. All them scriptures just line up together. That's why Paul was telling them to shut up. Because you come with doctrines. I feel. Right. The way I feel. Is it more? But they are commanded to be under obedience, as also saith the law. Right. So a, a true woman is supposed to be in obedience, not trying to be over men, not trying to be over a body, over the congregation. Again, that Jezebel spirit is a dangerous spirit. It will get people killed. And they, truly, and they truly, deep down, hate God. That's it. Then we learn enough from Eve? Right. Hey, so that's going to conclude tonight's episode of Watchmen Radio. That's right. So make sure you like, share, subscribe, right. support, support, support. I'm that's Officer right. Asa. Officer Ariel. And you tuned in to Watchmen Radio. Support, support, support. support. Lead them dumb doctrines alone and come serve the Lord. Most high in Christ, bless. Hebrews 13, 17, prophets on the scene, wash your souls clean before we go into the gasoline. Took a while to understand, Psalms 111, 10, brother calling me from Mississippi trying to build a man. I flushed 14 grams, it made angels rejoice, it made me and Satan divorce, no spouse support. I'm running the course with my hand to the plow, now. putting in the pebble the way soldier James taught me how. Break it out, it strengthened my spirit when we in the building, ain't no feeling like giving the precept for a precept giving Preach in more conditions Teach self a second living We Second Timothy 215 represent us Sheesh Will the common interest Prophesy to the wind Reveal the man of sin Endure it to the end We watch watchmen for Israel Cause we watch it for Israel We the watchmen for Israel